Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Davis and you're watching Fight News Now Extra. There are some fight announcements to tell you about and an update on Dominic Cruz in the Newsmakers. Then stick around to hear what John Pollock and John Ramdeen have to say about all of it. Let's get started. UFC Bantamweight Champion Dominic Cruz has undergone a second major surgery on the same knee he injured earlier this year. The first surgery was in June to repair his ACL, but his body has rejected the new ACL from a cadaver. Cruz's trainer estimates that he'll be out another six to nine months. A big treat for the fans in Japan at UFC on Fuel TV 8, as a giant and a knockout artist have just been booked to face each other. Verbal agreements have been made for Stefan Struve to take on Mark Hunt, and you know these heavyweights are both big in Japan. And a rematch is set for UFC 157. Bantamweight Uriah Faber and Ivan Menjavar will meet more than seven years after their first bout against each other at a TKO event in Laval, Quebec. UFC 157 takes place in Anaheim, California on February 23rd. That's the latest coming out of the MMA world. Let's take it over to our MMA panel, John Pollock and John Ramding, and it's John Squared. And what do you guys think about John Squared? I never Sorry. get tired of that nickname, it. Sarah. I love it. Uh, Favor Menjavar, the rematch. Well, I don't want to claim any ownership of this fight being made, but when I interviewed Ivan Menjavar right before his last fight against Azamat Gashimov, that is the name I threw out for him of a potential rematch. He certainly seemed down to fight Uriah Faber again. Now we are going to get it February the 23rd. Really exciting fight at 135, and I think on paper, a lot more exciting than Uriah Faber Von Lee, which if you're Uriah Faber, doesn't do a whole lot for you. Yeah, right now the 135 pound class is kind of a mishmash. We don't really know where guys are, and I agree with you. I think this matchup between uh, Menjavar and Faber makes a whole lot of sense, especially now that Dominic Cruz is out of the picture for probably another year. We heard rumors that Henan Barrow is going to take on Michael McDonald for the interim championship. I think that fight is now a foregone conclusion with the, the latest news on Cruz. Yeah, so it just comes down to just sorting out the rest of the division, and that's what they have to do because, yes, Menjavar is there, Faber's there. You throw Brad Pickett and uh, Eddie Wineland into yeah. the mix. Uh, Scott Jorgensen is competing. All it takes is to have a couple of good performances between now and early next year, and I think you'll have a couple of front runners uh, in the 135-pound division. We mentioned Dominic Cruz there. It looks like he'll be out another six to nine months, and between fights, it's going to be two years for this guy between fights. Someone that heavily relies upon speed, having this left knee ACL problem. I mean, here at the peak of his career, this is a real tough one um, to, to come back from, I think, if you're Dominic Cruz at this point. Yeah, I mean, if I was him, I'd be calling George saying, Pierre to say, what do I need to do to come back as strong as the welterweight champion? I mean, Dominic Cruz is a talented guy, and he's surrounded by some good trainers, and Lloyd Irvin is one of these guys that is going to take real care of his champion. The problem is, not a lot of people know Dominic Cruz, and the time away from mixed martial arts is going to hurt him more than anything else. Of course, it's paramount for him to be healthy and be ready to perform, but it's also the entertainment game, and you, try to have, you have to get your face out there if you want these big paydays, and I think that's the biggest thing that's going to hurt Dominic Cruz right now. And you have to wonder, already being out as long as he has, he's done a lot of an ana analysis work for Fox and for Fuel as well, and he's really uh, kind of distanced himself as one of the better analysts in the game right now. I think an injury like this, it does force you to look at life beyond fighting. And should this injury be something he doesn't come back to, he has kind of established a foundation of something where maybe he's going to take a lot more of an active interest in. In case this injury, maybe he doesn't come back near 100%. Yeah, I agree 100%. It really makes sense for Dominic Cruz to explore all of his options. This guy was a champion in the WEC, a champion in the UFC, and he's faced some of the top guys in the world. So, And he does a great job. So if Dominic Dominic Cruz doesn't come back, which, you know, I don't know if it's realistic that a guy suffers this type of injury to come back from, but Dominic Cruz is a, is a proven athlete and will, and the guy is known for his work ethic. So if it comes down to working his ass off and making sure that he's better, 
he's going to take those necessary steps. We're counting down to Fox this coming weekend. Uh, one of the best main cards the UFC has put together in quite some time and some really uh, fun fights on the undercard as well. But specifically this main card, John, what really st stands out for you? Because uh, and do you feel this is the formula we'll see on Fox moving forward? I would expect so. You can't really put that out there. You have your first show featuring the heavyweight championship of the world. And now five, four shows later, you have the lightweight championship of the world and two of the best welterweights in the world in Rory McDonald and BJ Penn. But I have to look at the, the 205 pound matchup between Shogun Hua, a guy that was the champion in both Pride and the UFC, taking on a guy that some people consider the future uh, training partner of Dominic Cruz and Phil Davis and coached by Lloyd Irvin and Brandon Vera. So we know that Alexander Gustafsson has an opportunity here because if he comes out and shocks the world and takes out Shogun, he can fast track himself to the head of the 205 pound heap. And that could mean a crack at John Jones or Chael Sonnen, but more likely it's John Jones after their uh, April tilt. Have you noticed a big promotional switch here for Fox? Because it feels like they are really solidly behind this card. And I think when they saw Nate Diaz and Jim Miller on the bill or, or Brandon Vera, for instance, I don't think that really got Fox's interest. And this, it seems like it's been a meeting of the minds. You give us big fights, we're going to give you big promotion. And that seems to be what this card really entails uh, at, the, at the underground of this whole it, promotional it, movement. Yeah, what it comes down to, it's a learning process for Fox because, yes, they got into it because they saw the brand is big, but they don't necessarily know all the big players. And this card here has some of the big players. It has the lightweight championship of the world. People saw both... Uh, Henderson and Diaz fight on the Fox shows in the past. And now, of course, Shogun, BJ Penn, and Rory McDonald. You have all the stars. It is going to be a good show, and this is what Fox wants. Saturday, Sarah, five and a half hours, and then we got Pacquiao Marquez. Gonna Exciting be a Saturday. Solid night. I'm sleeping in on Sunday. <laughs> Thanks. This Saturday night, we'll be bringing you live boxing from Golden Boy as Luis Ramos Jr. will go toe to toe with Ricardo Williams Jr. in Anaheim. So that gets underway at 10 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, and that means there's a lot going on this Saturday. All right, coming up next on Fight News Now Extra, find out what went down at Infusion 3 and Bellator 82.